Hi, shalom everyone. I'm going to continue this fantastic series of the great Rabbonim of Yester Year and a very well traveled rabbi, rabbi that was born in Bulgaria and would be a chief rabbi in Turkey and spent 32 years as the main Sephardi rabbi in Bucharest in Romania, respectively. It is Yatsai Tisilula, Rabbi Chaim Bijarno Zeche Tzadik Libracha, one of the great rabbis. Uh, of the Turkish elite and of the Romanian elite, especially during the late 1800s and the early 1900s, respectively. I believe he was actually born in the English year 1846 and who passed away on the 3rd of August 1931. To be precise, he was around approximately 85 years of age. I think it was on Yud Chet Av, the 18th of Av, is his yard site over here of the great, great rabbi himself. We'll explore him. He was a great Talmud Chacham. He was an expert within regards to Judeo-Spanish. And he was born, I believe, in Bulgaria, if I'm not mistaken. He would become a great uh, poet also, within regards to the language especially. And uh, he would actually, 32 years tenure, become the main Sephardi rabbi in Bucharest, in Romania, and would later on become the chief rabbi of Turkey, also, which is very, very prominent position. Okay, so in Bulgaria, he was born in uh, an area, I believe we call it the Sitara Zagora. This is, I believe, based in Bulgaria. I think it was at the time period of obviously the Ottoman Empire, also at that point in time, which is very interesting. I think it was in the year 1846. He was actually born in a period, uh, and it was a time period where there was a, there was a prosperous Jewish community also in Bulgaria at that point in time. I think some people uh, have different vari- variations of where his surname actually came from, which city specifically, which is very, very interesting enough. And uh, some believe that he was originally before Bulgaria from Portugal, from the area of Beja, if I'm not mistaken, also. And some people believe that maybe from Castile or from the province of Salamanca. Salamanca, I believe, is in uh is part of spain also so uh very very interesting now but he was very obviously had a very rich and colorful her- torah heritage also i believe he studied torah with his maternal grandfather who was also another great rabbi i believe we have spoken about in previous videos also harab yitzhak baruch Kalderon, who was a really great rabbi also and i believe at the age of 12 years old he returned to his father. So he spent a specific time period while he was young, before his teenage years, learning with his maternal grandfather and then would actually go back and go to his parents' uh, area also. And they would learn in a number of different yeshivot. Also, I believe one of the yeshivot was Rabbi Nisim Elkalai's yeshiva, also very permanent. And that was until the age of 17 years of age. And then he would work. I, I think he went to the city of Rusa, if I'm not mistaken, I think which is the port area of Bulgaria, respectively, also, and learned uh, over there also in another Talmud Torah over there, very uh, interesting enough. And then he would uh, also have a close connection, I think, in that specific area of uh, Rosa. There was, uh, he taught, I believe, that point in time, there was uh, Rabbi Shlo- there was Shlomo Abram Rosantis, who was, I believe, among his Talmudim over there at that point in time. It was a time period where I think he learned English, also French. He learned how to speak German and many different languages also. And I think he was part of the school system at the time, of the Allianz school system, which we have spoken about on previous occasions. Also, there was different school systems, especially in the various different Sephardic uh, countries. The Allianz one was another specific one. I don't think it was necessarily a uh, very Torah-orientated one, but nevertheless, it was... uh, It was a school in many of these specific areas and the Alliance School also he very much was in. And I think during the time period there was an Ottoman-Russian war. I believe this was around possibly the period of 1877-ish or something. This area of Rus was besieged and occupied by the Russian Empire at that point in time. Uh, Unfortunately, there was some sad news. I think his mother was uh, unfortunately killed during this, uh, this war. By, she was shelled, unfortunately. That was uh, obviously very, very tough. And then I believe he actually went and to the area of Romania, to Bucharest, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, also. So he arrived, he went to Romania, obviously, to escape this specific conflict that was going on, and arrived in Bucharest, I believe, in the year 1878. And over there, he became the rabbi over there, and he became a darshan in the, Beit, the Sephardic main Beit Knesset, the synagogue, in the city of Bucharest, respectively. He had various different roles over 
all over there. And it reported over 32 years, he will have this tenure as being heading this specific congregation of the Sephardic congregation also. I believe in uh, 1896, the year 1896, if I am not mistaken, he uh, taught Hebrew, apparently reported over at the the, the Faculty of Theology in the University of Bucharest was very, very well, let's say, had a broad education also and a broad teaching network also, being the head of the Kehida, also among the people, in the commoners in Bucharest and the, the university students in Bucharest who were teaching, became very educated uh, and close to the various educated uh, people in Romania also. So he was very well traveled, he had connections with Romanian historians also over there and with people from all over the Romanian work, walks of life also, which we will talk about also at a later stage. I think at one stage, a new building for the Sp- Spanish Sephardic Synagogue was uh, s- set about a re- rededication. I believe that was in the year 1889, if I am not mistaken, also. But uh, he had very, very strong relationships with people. It was reported over. He was often hosted in the King's Palace as a guest of Queen Elizabeth, if I'm not mistaken, which is very, very interesting enough. Also, I believe was a queen of Romania also, which is uh, very... And his wisdom was approved and uh, loved by many people, including uh, various French legions, English legions, Germans, Italians, Turkish, Persian, and uh, Arabic. He was able to speak, converse in so many different languages. He actually reports over, he sometimes served as an interpreter for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs also, and the court of the King of Romania also. And he is reported over, he also assisted the Roman, Romanian general Vasila Harsko also in writing the history of the Romanian War of Independence, if I'm not mistaken. Also, which I think was translated into various languages, including Turkish, Persian and uh, various other languages. Also, so that is very interesting enough. You know, it's uh, a lot of these great Sephardi rabbis were very, very, uh, let's say, uh, intermingled with many people and really, really uh, was loved by many of the commoners or the regular people and royalties in the various countries. Also, we spoke about many rabbis in this series also. I believe also he was part of the Chovavet Sion also in Romania also respectively. I think he had a connection somehow with Herzl, Theodor Herzl also, and uh, especially Elias Ben Yehuda and other people also, which is very, very interesting enough also because... Uh, it seems like he was a really, really great people's per- person also. And I think he really was very fond of uh, reviving the, sp- the Jewish language itself, the Hebrew language itself, which is spoken Hebrew language. And he emphasized the importance of, let's say, to prefer the Spanish pronunci- the Sephardic pronunciation of the language itself. He was very much advocating also. He published articles also in Hebrew, various different Hebrew newspapers at that point in time also. I think... Uh, let's explore some of the Hebrew newspapers. I think it was called the Magid and the Hatsofa and the Chabad Selet also. These were different things. And there was a Itune Ha Ladino, a Ladino language also, uh, Telegrapha, but the El Tempo, if I'm not mistaken, also, which is another publication over there. We've spoken about many of these, uh, great publications that we, uh, have spoken about before. He was praised, I think, by various different people, including uh, by in the book of Jules Simon, and he was praised by Ernest Renan also, and he was also uh, had very strong ties within regards to Italian language also. Now, friends, afterwards he became the acting chief rabbi of Turkey. I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was in the year 1910. It was, uh, I think it was an area of, uh, he was in Ad- Adirna, he actually came to, which I think was part of Turkey itself, which is, I think, in the border, if I'm not mistaken, of Bulgaria, respectively. He was serving as a chief rabbi of that community. He established Jewish school over there, also, and tried to help the Jews of that specific time period, uh, where, unfortunately, there was a Balkan war taking place. And I believe, after another great rabbi we've spoken about before, Rabbi Chaim Nahum Effendi, who was uh, retired from his position as the chief rabbi of the whole of Turkey. We dedicated a video to him not so long ago. I think this was in the year 1920. Rabbi Berjano, he moved to Istanbul and was chosen to serve as acting chief rabbi, the Chacham Bashi, the chief rabbi of Turkey, respectively. An extremely prominent position that was. And uh, he obviously lived and was very much involved in teaching in the time period between the Ottoman Empire and the modern Turkish Republic also. He uh, was part of a transition generation, let's say, of Ottoman Sephardic Judaism. And uh, his activities was obviously multifaceted in Halakhic tradition. And uh, very much he was uh, had the national 
interest with regards to Judaism, culture, Torah culture. He established, he corresponded uh, with many of the great writers and intellectuals also, such as Antole of France and also Georges Clemencia, I hope I pronounced him, also Moshe Gasso, if I'm not mistaken, also who was a prominent rabbi, also I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was a Sephardi chief rabbi in England of the United Kingdom Commonwealth at one stage of time and that. Chaim Nachman Bialik also was another person he very much corresponded to also. He was involved with in regards to many other things, many other topics. I very much recommend everyone to research within the greatness of uh, the broadness of him. He passed away in Istanbul, I believe it was in the year 1931. So if I'm not mistaken, this will be uh, 93 years ago from the time of passing. I think... He was buried in uh, the burial plot in Ar- uh, Arnavatkoi, if I'm not mistaken, also, so which is uh, very interesting enough. He was married to Rabbanit Reina, if I'm not mistaken, also. It reported over they had three sons, I believe, uh, including their names was Marin, uh, Sabar, and Vazak, uh, uh, Zak, Zak. I hope I pronounce uh, Names correctly. I believe they had five girls, also including Gaboka, Rosa, Rachel, Diamanti, and also uh, Balina, if I'm not mistaken. Also, once again, I hope I pronounced uh, the names correctly also, because obviously uh, it was a different language. We're not used to this specific language. Uh, it's actually interesting also just to point out more greatness within regards to him. He wants to increase the Kesha within regards to the Spanish communities. And uh, Ladino also wanted to make it make sure that it would be very strong and not be lost this incredible language itself. Also, if I'm not mistaken, also he made a lot of uh, efforts within regards to this. I think uh, he had connections also with Dr. Angel Pulido Fernandez also, who was a a spiritual doctor and a senator from Spain. And he was actually mesmerized to see how he was speaking Judeo-Spanish, if I'm not mistaken, Also, and he devoted many, many of his activities within regards to uh, strengthening this specific language. It's reported over he wrote many different uh, publications in Ladino, including 3,600 proverbs and uh, various uh, folk sayings, as we say, which the Sephardic Jewish people did in that specific time. He composed many different songs and poems also. uh, Very interesting enough, using Spanish language in of itself also that can be uh, related. Let's explore some of the books that he published also uh, within our outside. There was Arashat HaChayim, which was Jushim, on different uh, specific items. Also, I think these were left off in manuscript forms. There was a Shuvat Mechayim also, which was a Pskei Hadin on the, uh, on the topic of Agunot, if I'm not mistaken. There was a Chayim Berushalayim also, also, which is another colossal work. And there's a Putin, the Tchinot also, which is more Putin, uh, poems, let's say songs, and uh, Shirim, and uh, very interesting. Now, there was Munat Uman also, which was, I think, a philosophical base book also, which is very interesting enough. There was Chayim Ata Olam, Likute, Mamarim, Shepirisam Bikitvei, Et, Besafot Shonot, which is in different languages also. Targum Toldot Teva also, which was uh, another colossal work. I'm not sure how many volumes. And Haget, it said, Yudim also. And it's actually interesting. I think he wrote different uh, perushim on the book of the Rambam, respectively. But also, also on uh, he spoke about also Moshe Mendelssohn. Also, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if he had a connection with him. As I stated before, I read that he had some connections with the Reform rabbis. Also, at stage one stage in time, but however, he may he was a uh, chief rabbi in Turkey. So very much, uh, I would assume, uh, really. Uh, concentrated on Orthodox Judaism also, but was obviously uh, interacting with everyone also. I think he wrote various Kiddushé Torah also on the Mesechet in Talmud, a Babli also, if I'm not mistaken. Also, I think 4,000 parallels were included in these uh, specific uh, manuscripts, if I'm not mistaken, also. But it's this Hilula here on Yud Chet Ab. Now, it's actually interesting. He received a knighthood, as I said before, from the Roma- Romanian crown, if I'm not mistaken, also, which was uh, very, uh, from the Keta, Romania, let's just say. Very prominent accolade, especially among intellectualists and uh, people uh, that live in those specific areas. I think he received a doctorate in the rabbinical seminary in Vienna, also in Austria, respectively. And he was a corresponding member also of the Spanish Academy in Madrid also, and remember he was dealing with all dignitaries, queens, kings from all over, especially Europe 
and uh, it's easy outside. Please don't forget to light candles in the great rabbi's memory. And uh, we haven't spoken about many great Romanian-based rabbis. Also, just to go back to it, his rabbis include the Rabbi Nisim Akala, as I mentioned before, Rabbi Yitzchak Baruch, Calderon also. One of his, Talm- his Talmud, his star Talmud, because it was Rabbi Shlomo Avram Rosanis, who we've spoken about also before, who was one of the great historians, if I'm not mistaken, of Spanish history also. And uh, please don't forget to like candles and memory and subscribe to the channel. I'm wishing you all a great day. Take care.